Hello everyone. My name is Namath and I'm a lead product designer. Today in this video, I want to show you how to create a simple button component to give it component properties that will make it reusable. But most importantly, we want to take this button one level further and use Figma variables to make the button change in different modes, dark and light modes, as well as change languages and maybe make it themable as well, changing different themes for this button. So let's start with a simple button. First, I'm gonna click T, the shortcut for type, and I'm gonna write button. So I click Shift A, and now I have auto layout. There's a frame that was automatically created. You can see under the auto layout, normally Figma defaults to 10, but because I always change it to match the eight point grid, this time it defaulted correctly to eight instead of 10. So I'm gonna give this uh, a color. So I'm adding a fill and instead of white, just to make it visible for us, I'm gonna go with something like a blue, blue purple button. Okay. And on the level of this frame, and by the way, let's go name that, let's call it button. So let's add a corner radius to this button. I'm making it an eight as well. And I would like to add an icon to the button as well. So there's many ways you can add icons. You might have your own, you may download a library. Let's do it through a plugin right now. So for example, this is an Ionic icon set. So I'm just gonna drag, let's maybe use the, mm, the cog button. What kind of properties would we want to give this button to allow our users to customize it further? One thing that my users may want to do is hide the icon or show the icon. Let us hide the grid view right now because we don't really need it. So what that means is we need a Boolean property on the level of this icon. So let me go and select this cog. And when you're creating a Boolean property, you need to do that on the level of the layer. And you can see that automatically as soon as you hover on the layer, it says create a Boolean property. So I'm gonna do that. And we don't need to say cog, we just wanna say the name of this property is show the icon. And by default, we want it to be true. We want the icon to be visible. I'm gonna create this property. Now, what does this mean is, if I were to click option and drag, that will give me an instance of my component. Do you see? You recognize the instance because it's an empty diamond versus the full four diamonds that are there on the main component. So when a user takes an instance of my component, they automatically has, have this property that you can see on the right. They can show the icon or hide it. That's what we gave them by creating this Boolean property. Now. Another thing that I normally would want to create is a text property on the level of this text. And what the pro text property does, it will allow my users to customize the text in the instance property panel. So I'm going to do this now, even though we will need to detach from that later on, and I'll explain to you why. But let's start by creating this. So do you see here next to the button text, we've got this property. I'm going to click on create text property and the value for it right now is button. What you will see is in my instance, now I have this text property that allows me to change the text here. Let's say, hello world. And if my auto layout is working properly, you'll see my button will automatically adjust the size. So now we have our button. The last type of property that we would like to create is a variant so that we can allow for different states for this button. With the component selected, you will see that there is an option to add a variant now. I will click on add variant, and now there's a property in my right panel that we need to define. So let's define the name of the property and call it state. And my variant too, I would like that to be the hover state. We're gonna create one more and selecting the component again, clicking the plus button, and this third state, we wanna have it as active. So the first one is default, hover, and active. And the main thing I would wanna change here is the color of the background. We're gonna leave the other things happening the same way. 
So I'm gonna come here to the fill and maybe I would make it slightly lighter for the hover. And then for active, I would like to make it slightly more pronounced and darker. When you select the instance that my user would be consuming from this component, now they have three available options to customize. They have hover or active. They can change the state, they can change the text, they can show or hide the icon. Now let's move on to our variables. So with nothing selected, this is when local variables become visible to us. I'm gonna click on that. So I created a variable called button label and in three modes, English, it will say hello word, Chinese, I copied the translation as well as French. You can easily use Google Translate even to just get that for your demo or for the purpose of exploring with this. So this is my localization variable. Now, one thing to keep in mind is every time you want to create a localization or a text variable, it's important when clicking create variable to choose a string variable because that's how you can customize text. Okay. Now, the next collection that I created is what I'm calling modes collection. And in that, we created a few and I'm gonna explain and go through those. So first, I created a blue button background. The reason we have blue and pink is because we wanna explore different themes. So for my blue button background, I created the light color and I just filled in something. So if I was going through that from scratch, I will create a color variable. We would give it a name based on where we would like to connect it with shower layer and we can give it a color for light mode and a color for night mode. Okay, we don't need this variable right now, so I'm gonna right click and delete it. But as you can see, we have a button blue background that changes between light and night. We've got a pink button background that changes also. We've got a button text and icon. So one thing that you will notice is on dark mode and light mode, my button will look differently. Now, the last collection I want to show you, and this is where it gets a bit tricky. Because I want my buttons to, up, to have both themes, theming capability, as well as changeability with modes, that's why we're creating this third collection called Theme. And what I'm using here is an alias. So I created this uh, color uh, variable once again. I called it primary and Instead of linking it to a random color, what I've done is instead of going to a custom hex that we're adding, I went to libraries and I'm looking at my local libraries and in modes. Do you remember the modes collection that was there? So here I have for the blue theme, I'm collecting to the blue button background and for the pink theme, I'm connecting for the pink button background that lives under my modes and you will see what that will do. Now, how do we link these variables to our existing buttons? This is already connected here. So this is the same component, like the button component that we created here, but I'm gonna show you how to apply it on the level of this component. So let's say we come here to this component. If I were to scroll down, you will see that the fill that it has is just a regular hex color, but I want to connect it to my variable. So what I'm going to do is we're going to click on styles and variables, the four dots here, and we're going to come to themes and select primary. You will see what this will do, but we're going to go one step deeper and the text and icon, rather than having a random color, we want to connect those to our text and icon color fill. So we're going to come here again, clicking on styles and variables and if I hover on this, it says button, text, and icon. So we're going to click that and apply it to them. You can see it's connected to a variable and no longer just to a regular hex. And the last thing that we want to do to apply the localization, I'm going to come on the level of the text. Remember how when we were creating this, I told you about the text property. Even though it's very useful to allow you to change the text, but when this is available, when there's a text property, that means there is no visibility 
for our variables. I'm not able to link this to a variable, but because we want to localize this component, I need a variable. So what I'm going to do, do you see this detach property here? We're going to detach from the text property. And the moment I've done that, automatically you can see the variable button becomes available to me. So I'm going to say, and it's automatically visible because that's the only string variable that we have in this file. We're going to connect to a button label and it automatically applied the text, hello world. So in, in a realistic case where you actually wanna have translated text, of course, it's gonna be the exact text. It's not gonna be a property that you can change the text in. So now that we've done this, let's go and test this button. So let's create a random frame, again, clicking F, creating a frame here and if I were to select this frame by itself, you can see nothing appears on the level of its layer. But if I drag the button component in the frame and then select the frame again, now the layer on this frame has availability to change different modes because it recognizes that the component within it has different available modes to change. And you will see whatever is applied on the level of that component becomes available to us. So I'm going to set my first frame to have maybe a blue theme. You see, automatically this became visible. I also want to set it to have a Chinese language and I'm going to set it to have a light mode. And then I'm going to duplicate this frame by clicking option drag. And for the second frame, let, let's let's name what's there in our first frame. So light plus Chinese plus now let's do different things with this particular frame. Instead of Chinese, let's change it to French automatically. Let's go to night mode and one more step. Let's go to the pink theme. And as you can see, automatically everything is changing and you have this flexibility to make your components carry an incredible logic by using the Figma variables. I hope this is useful for you. If you have any questions for me about it, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll be happy to address them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching.